Welcome to my latest battle report. There is a horror, a terror raging across the battlefields of the 41st millennium right now, and that is called the Eldari. So there is only one force that could stand against them, and that's Murphy and his war. But Murphy will be dipping his toe in as we start our journey with Orcs. So we're playing a 1,500 point game and it's going to be Dawn of War deployment with a custom battlefield and take and hold. That's the normal stuff I play on the channel. So we've got five primary objectives down on the table and you get five, 10, 15 points up to a maximum of 15 from turn two onwards for every primary objective that you control. And then we're going to be drawing two cards a turn every turn from the Leviathan mission deck as we're fighting in and amongst or on the edge of this orky outpost that has come under the sway or has come under attack by those spandex wearing Eldari scummy guys. Basically not a jot of power up armor in sight today. Xenos on Xenos action. The battle map is from urbanmats.com. All this lovely terrain here is from cromlech.eu I want to say. We welcome back to the channel Heathage. Say hi Heathage. Hi Heathage. How many games of 10th edition have you played? Zero. Brilliant. So it means you're completely rusty with the Eldari. Yeah I have I've learned the rules over the last few days. Nice. So this is going to be fine because you, you it's not this fine because I'm not scared about playing against the Eldari at all now. That's good. Thank you. Are you scared against playing against Murphy and his wife? No, I've beaten them what? before. I've beaten them before. It might have been in ninth, but you know, I've done it before. I can do it again. I'll I've just wing it. I have no recollection of that whatsoever. This is 1,500 points. Of orcs. Orcs get uh, exploding sixes in melee, sustained hits in melee. There's a strat you can pop for one CP which gives them exploding hits on fives in melee, and once per battle they can declare a wah and advance and charge, get what plus one strength and attack in melee, and get a five up in vulnerable save. And joining us, of course, is Howling Mad Murphy. All of my orcs are painted lovely to a gorgeous level four painting standard by Den of Imagination Painting Studios, and all the bases are also done by Den of Imagination Painting Studios. Murphy is a war boss in Mega Armor. He's also got a super cyborg body upgrade, gives him a four up, feel no pain, massive chopper there. And he's gonna be running around with a unit of knobs and knobs naturally have minus one to wound right now. And when you put a war boss in a unit, that unit hits on twos. Same with the Death Killer War Trike here. That unit hits on twos, and with him in it, when they go flat out, they can go a uh, full six inches. And this one, he's not as brutal as M Murphy, but he is cunning. He's cunning, but brutal enhancement. So he can fall back, shoot, and charge. Very handy in a unit of bikers. Um, the Morkanaut can fit 12 things in now. Murphy counts as two, so this whole unit can go inside the Morkanaut. They'll go clanking up the table, war boss speeding round over the table as they try and uh, uh, beat each other in the kill death tally. And then over here, we have a pain boy. The knob in this unit has got a claw and the pain boy gives them all a feel, up pain, a feel no pain. The, his, his medic grot there, his medic grot, you can eat him once a battle and put D3 boys back in there. Oh, should also mention with the knobs, four, uh, six of them have big choppers, four of them all have power claws. In the backfield, we have lunch, and the lunch are manning the mech guns. I've got two custom mega cannons in each slot. Bit of a Mark of Dave going on here, but basically they all look like that. They don't look like that. Custom mega cannons are really good. Wish I'd have made them all up as custom mega cannons or magnetized them, but here we are. All custom mega cannons and two shotgun dragsters. They can automatically advance now and go through a teleport tunnel and redeploy somewhere more than nine inches away from an enemy unit. Their guns are not assault, so if they do that, they're not shooting. But I figure they're relatively cheap to zip forward, steal objectives, maybe get into table quarters or area denial or investigate sites or something like that. And they do have a flat and vulnerable save these days. Essentially, what I've got is a couple of mech guns in the backfield, throwing down some DACA and some bikes speeding around all over the place, and three big chunky units racing up the table, trying to eat as many spandex wearing Xenos pointy eared craft world Eldar as much as possible because they're really tasty. They taste like Skittles. Anyway, let's have a look at the craft worlders. Here is 1,500 points of space elves from space. Space. They have strands of fate. 
12 dice. What does this do? So I think at the start of the game, I can roll 12 dice. Yes. And I can, throughout the game, once per, for only once per phase, I can use those dice in place of a normal dice roll. I can, I can only do it before, though. I can't roll a dice and then decide, no, actually, I want to use this round of fake dice. Yes, and they nerfed it to say once per phase now. Yeah, only pe- once per phase. Because people were just spamming it all and doing it all really, really heavy. And as far as I'm aware, if I don't like the initial 12 dice, yes. I can re-roll them, but I lose a dice, so it goes down to 11. Yep. If I don't like them, it goes down to 10. Yep. So I can keep re-rolling, but I don't know whether that's going to be a great idea or not. Depends on what I roll. Yeah, because sometimes having ones is good, but mainly we're looking for those sixes. Yeah. The other thing they do is every time a unit shoots or fights, you can re-roll a hit and re-roll a wound. Yeah. So uh, lots of re-rolls, lots of dice manipulation going on here. So let's start simple and easy, because I I know these rules. Okay. I've got two squads of Guardian Defenders. Yep. um, And they've got their support platforms, which have Shuriken Cannons. Okay. And from what I remember of the rules, is they've got Defenders of Fate. Right. So at the end of my command phase, for each objective marker I control that has one or more units from your army with this ability, Yep. uh, roll 1d6 and add it to your date. Uh, date fate dice roll in your command phase yep so you can add to the number of fate dice that you've got each turn assuming these guys are alive yep so for example if both of those units are on a different command point or an objective marker i yep. may get two fate dice what you're saying is kill these guys um no leave them alone they're really nice <laughs> they're, they're defenders they're not attackers so if you don't attack them they won't attack you yeah defending is not the orc way though so we'll oh, attack well. your defenders. Uh, weren't the defenders in the Marvels? I'm sure they were. Uh, where are we going next? We're going to go to the Farseer Skyrunner. Yep. So I've got a Farseer Skyrunner. I've yep. got a Warlock Skyrunner. And they're with a squad of six Wind Riders. Right. So we'll... you can attach them both to a unit of Wind Riders. Yes. So I the like Warlock Skyrunner has a rule where um, as a leader... If it's if even if another leader is attached to a unit, I can still attach okay that um attach him to a to them. Yep. But with the fire seer, so he's got um he's got branching fates. So once per turn, when you use a fate dice to substitute a roll made for a model or unit within twelve inches of the fire seer, I can turn that roll immediately into a six. Brilliant. So even if I roll any bad ones or anything, I can do that. And it's within 12. It doesn't have to be on his own unit. It doesn't have to be in, on his own unit. It's anyone okay. within 12 inches. Fortunately, it's once per turn. Uh, he's got the psychic ability guide. So in the confound phase, I can roll 1d6 and on 2+, plus, select one friendly Eldari unit within 12 inches of the psyker. Again, any unit within 12 inches, not his own yep. unit. Until the until next command phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, you can re-roll the hit roll. It's like Eldari didn't need enough re-rolls, so they thought, let's give them some more re-rolls. I feel like they've turned into when Space Marines had all the re-rolls, now right. Eldari have all the re-rolls. There's a lot less re-rolls in this edition, have you noticed? Um, yeah, apart from <laughs> when you play Eldari. <laughs> um... And then with, with the Warlock Skyrunner, um, his psychic powers, he's got uh, Runes of Battle. I can either choose Conceal, which is models in this model's unit have the stealth ability, or Reveal. Range weapons equipped by models in this unit have the Ignore's Cover ability. Okay. So you can give them all minus one to hit all the time against yeah. shooting. I like it. What else we got? Uh, the Wind Riders have a special ability where Swift Demise, each time a model in this unit makes a ranged attack that targets the closest eligible target, re-roll a hit wall one. More re-rolls. Um, if that target is, of that attack is within range of an objective marker, your opponent controls, you can re-roll the hit roll instead. So one minute. These guys, if I'm in range of an objective marker, they're re-rolling all the hit rolls. Yeah. And then he can throw it out on another unit and they can re-roll all the hit rolls. Exactly. Okay. And then you can re-roll a hit roll of one, you can re-roll a wound roll of one, and you can spike the dice whenever you want to. Exactly. So this game is a game of chance. This game is a game of dice. We play dice, but uh, it feels like Craft Worlds, they just don't like playing dice. No. Everyone else is playing checkers, they're playing chess. See, uh, again, we're looking into the future, and, you know, if, if, if a shot goes off target, we just think, oh, well, I just need to aim a little bit lower. You know, I know that's the narrative excuse for it. <laughs> I think it's, you know, it, it's very thematic. It's very Eldari. Yeah. 
They, they, to be honest, if they, they they might hit a lot, but they are quite... They're like a glass cannon. They, if you hit back, they are going to fall apart. Well, you see a glass cannon, but the Wraith Guard, Wraith Blades and War Walkers have gone up to toughness 7 now. Well, let's get to them then. So okay. let's go to the Wraith Blades. So right. I've given them the, le- the Spirit Seer as a leader. Okay. And so he's got some abilities where Spirit Mark, while this model is leading a unit... Weapons in that unit have the lethal hits ability. Okay. And each time model in that unit makes an attack, add one to the hit roll. Because those axes hit on fours now, so when he's there hitting on threes. Yep. And six is to hit or to wound. Nice. Tears of Ish Isha. Yes. While this model is leading a unit in the command phase, you can return one destroyed bodyguard model to that unit. You said they were glass cannons. Well, the Guardians might be. The Skyrunners and the... Uh, wind riders might be, but the Wraith Guard and the Wraith Blades aren't. Because you can put ones back in, and I'm not entirely, you're not convincing me that these are glass cannons when you can put <laughs> stealth on them, minus one to hit. Do you know what minus one to hit on well, Orc is? Once, once that's you hitting hit, on sixes, that's well, what that once, is. As soon, as, when you hit, though, they yes. kind of fall apart. Like the, the Orc strength of when you hit. Yeah, that's gonna it's gonna chop right through them. I might as well cut the models in half with scissors. <laughs> um, but the wraith blades, um, their ability—they've got malevolent souls. I cannot speak. Malevolent souls. Each time a model in this unit is destroyed by a melee attack, if that model has not fought this phase, roll one d six on a four plus. Do not remove it from play. That destroyed model can fight after attacking model's unit has finished making its attack. Brilliant. And is then removed. Brilliant. And they have. Because they have four shields, the they have a four plus in vulnerable we'll save. Toughness seven with a four up and one. Yeah, brilliant. So Which they're... can hit when they die, and you can pick them up if they've died. They're more of a cannon, glass cannon without the glass. Okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Exactly, that yeah. makes perfect sense. So the description still fits. There's just some modifiers there. Wraith Guard. Uh, Wraith Guard. Uh, walk. They've got the ability War Constructs. They've got. Uh, they've just got normal Wraith Cannons. With, right. That has devastating wounds on it. Yeah. But once per battle round, when an enemy unit targets this unit, after that unit has ma- finished making its attacks, this unit can shoot as if it were my shooting phase. What? When, when doing so, this unit's range weapons have the pistol ability. So when targeted by attack, so if I shoot them... They fire back as though they're pistols. Yeah. And when targeted by attack, so if I hit them in close combat, they shoot me back with pistols. Yes. Nice. So their weapons are treated as pistols, and when you have Wraith Cannons that are one attack each, hitting yep. on fours, but they're strength 14, that's what, a strong pistol. What What is strength? One attack, strength 14 is a strong pistol. If I kill them utterly in close combat, though, do they still get to do that? Um... No. 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 They've got to still be alive. And it's once per battle round. They okay. have to still be alive, but it's still a strong pistol. It's still a very strong pistol. Do they have an invulnerable save as well? They do not, no. Okay. They have a save of 2 plus, though. Oh, brilliant. Uh, where are we going to next? We're going to go to the War Walkers. War Walkers, yeah. Uh, I think they've got a 4 up invulnerable save so as well these days. They have a 4 up invulnerable save. Of course save. they do. So that's a nice difference. It used to be a 5. Yep. And they have, they, they're counted as scouts, actually. Okay. So at the start of the battle, after deployment and before the first turn begins, I can move them nine inches. That makes sense. That's fine. I'm yeah. fine with that. And they have power fields. When each time a ranged attack targets this unit, subtract yeah. one from the wound roll. One from the wound roll. And all, both war walkers have just got Eldar missile launchers, and they have two of them. Okay. I like it. We have the good, the trusty, the wave serpent. So the wave serpent, which the uh, spirit seer and the wraith blades are going to be in. Okay. Um, it has a wave serpent shield. Um, once per battle, you can select one enemy unit that's within twelve inches of and invisible to this model. Roll one d six, and on two plus, that enemy unit suffers d three mortal wounds. Brilliant. And must take a battle shock test. Okay. So you can um, still disperse your shield. And. The other ability is it's got deadly demise. So okay. when it dies uh, on on a six, I think. Yeah, yeah. It deadly demise up. on a six. Things blow up. Vehicles blow up on sixes. Two fire prisms. Fire prisms. Two big guns that I cannot lie. Now One they have favorite. a weird rule, because their weird rule is called uh, crystal matrix. Right. Each time this model is selected to shoot, you can re-roll one hit roll and you can re-roll one wound roll when resolving these attacks. Which is the Eldari army-wide rule. 
So what you've got is an army-wide rule which kicks in when these fire to allow them to re-roll a hit and a wound. And a data sheet rule which kicks in when these fire which also allows them to re-roll a hit and a wound. Yep. Because it would be a shame when Eldar shot if they ever rolled a miss. Well, they're perfect, I think. They're just, they're just precision shots. Precision shots. It, How many shots does the big gun do now in its focus mode or whatever uh, it is? So focus lances, it's yep. got two shots. Okay, so it could freeze. miss. Strength 18. Strength what? Strength 18. Excuse me? Uh, I think 18. I'm, okay. I'm not too sure. I think I'm reading that one. It says 1-8. So I think that's I think... obviously a 12. Okay. <laughs> but it's strength 18, minus 4 AP, uh, 6 damage. Sorry, what? Just 6 damage. Just flat 6. Not D3 plus 3, not D6, flat no, 6. 6 damage. Oh, and they have another ability. When Do fire they? in a focus lance, I didn't realise this. Uh, so the stratagem they used to have was they used to have linked fire. One fast to the other. The yeah, other. and it used to be you could re-roll all hit rolls and all wound rolls, and if one couldn't see, it could still shoot the other target. But okay. it seems they've worked the stratagem into their data sheet. Okay. And they have linked fire when you shoot, um, when you're shooting their prison cannon. When selecting targets for this weapon, you can measure range and determine visibility from another friendly fire prison model that is vis visible to the bearer. So I could hide this one. Yeah. This guy here. Yeah. And he wouldn't be able to see anything. But as long as he can see this one, yeah. and this one can see all the targets, that can shoot as if it can see those targets. Through that one. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> um, and that is pretty much everything. It's only 1,500 points. It's only 1,500. Murphy is not scared. Um, the, fact, the fact that you're never gonna, you're always going to hit and you're always going to wound, all we need to do is get up there and crump you. Exactly. So what I'll do is I'll just line the edge of the board with every single model. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have nowhere to run, but you know. <laughs> Let's go to deployment. We deployed for this 1,500 point game of Hot Xenos on Xenos Action. Murphy's Wire is taken to the field for the first time in 10th edition, and I'm excited. Despite the fact that across the battlefield is this absolute horror that absolutely no one... Uh, it's a fair point, by the way. You're not a bandwagon jumper. You've been on this wagon for some time. I've liked Eldar for a very long time. Even before, because you played when the, when the wheels were off, but now the wheels are back on. Yeah. You're good. You like them. Yeah. So uh, well, let's talk about deployment. Your wind host is down this side, which is interesting because your bikers are ready to speed up this flank of the battle grid. And I put my bikers about all the way over here, the bike is on this side of the battle grid with my mech guns. I like the fact that you didn't put anything inside the Orky outpost. Instead, it looks like you're trying to... This is a strong flank round here, right? Is that yeah, what we're doing? That's what I'm going for. I want to try and have a strong flank here. I saw your bikes up there. I know yeah. they're going to do some damage. So I want to buy time while I take control here. Yes. And then as soon as I've taken that control, yes, they're going to have to run into what is a... Uh, you know, a well-established defence. Okay, so Warlord over here with the bikers, with the war walkers, with some guardians, with your big tanks, and then here are the Wraith Blades. Where are the Wraith... Where are the other Wraith ones and the other unit guardians? So they're in strategic reserves. Being sneaky? Yeah, being sneaky. We're going to have some craft world trickery. I look forward to seeing it. Down here is uh, one of the shock dump dragsters, another of the shock dump dragsters. I put a big mob of boys with some mech guns. The war boss on the Death Killer War Trike with some mech guns holding on to my home field objective. And of course, Murphy in his Morkanol in his pimp ride. He ain't scared. He's right in the middle of the battle grid, ready to go rampaging up the table. It's got a five up and vulnerable save. I'm not going to fail a save. <laughs> Let's roll off to see who goes first. After you, sir. Good luck. Uh, and six. it's a six. And that's a five. It is going to be Eldari. Turn one, oh mama. Let's see what the strands of fate say. Rolling at 12 dice, lots of different colours. And I see four sixes. That's very good, I think. Basically, 10 out of 12 of those are uh, auto hits. Yes. Oh, dear. Right, let's draw some orders. Okay, here are the orders for the Eldari. Has your Farseer got a name? Yes. What, what's your Farseer name? He's shouting out some orders right now. Uh, it's Farseer Winters. That's not a thing. That is a thing. It is a thing. It, it was established years ago, and it's a thing. Farseer Winters is shouting out, kill as much as possible and take the centre. I don't like him already. He sounds like a troublemaker. 
Now we also have some command phase actions, some shenanigans going on down the or, uh, Eldar line here. What's going on? So I'm gonna fast your winners. It's yeah. gonna use <laughs> not <a thing. laughs> It's gonna use guide on my war, war, war one of my war walkers because okay. they, they are just individual units. So I'm gonna say the front one. Yes. And then I'm gonna use conceal from my uh, the uh, the warlock. Yeah. And he's gonna conceal this unit. So then minus one to hit. That uh, War Walker's got re-roll all hits. You don't really need to put it on the Fire Prisms because they've already got all that sort of shenanigans. Yep. And at the end of your command phase, for each objective that you control, and you can control one, you can roll a d6 and add this to your Fate Ball. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to roll that now. And get a five. That's another five. And it is turn one, and Eldar have turn one, and I'm about to get hit by a lot of shots. So we're declaring... A war! The Eldar move forward, this unit advancing around here to get in range of the Orcs because twin, twin Shuriken catapults have the assault ability, so yeah. you can shoot. Plus, there's a strat, fire and fade, and they can make a normal move again. And their move is 14? Yeah. So, yeah, they can shoot and dip back again, but up in the middle, taking advantage of the area denial. Uh, secondary and putting his tank right in arm's way the wave serpent zipped forward that would be five points on the secondaries there for area denial but can he kill any of murphy's while we're starting off with the shooting phase a focused mode fire prism firing at a grot firing at the big boy the big red one the big not red a grot one. then there's a grot is it there you can shoot a grot no firing at the big red one okay and you hit on threes hit on threes yep and so you can re-roll one i can re-roll that it misses. I'm going to use one of my fate dice. Yeah, it's free because I need a free to wound. I might as well make that an auto wound and make use of that fate dice. So you auto wound me. Yep. Morganite is a five up and vulnerable save. I'm going to be fine. Uh, unless I roll a three, I'm not going to be fine. That's six damage. It's down to 14 remaining. Second, a fire prism. Firing at the same target. Threes to hit. Uh, both both hit. of them hit. Threes to wound. And they don't wound, but I can re roll. Reroll, and, and I can do it twice because you, of the special shenanigans. Yes, uh, once for the battle unit thing, and once because of the rules that they have. And one one wound, wound comes through. Don't worry, five up and vulnerable save. I got this. I don't got this. That's another six wounds. Moving down the line, the unit of boys are about to be lit up by the guided war uh, war walker. Each of these missile launchers is a d6 shot with blast. So one is d6 plus four. Two of them. 2d6 plus 8 coming in. How many shots? Uh, we're going to roll. So 16 shots hitting on threes. And re-rolling everything for guide. Here we are for the re-rolls. One of them missed. Strength 4 versus toughness 5. Fives to wound and you can re-roll one of these as well. And so far only three wounds. So re-roll one of these. Yes, yeah. because your Eldar ability. Four wounds. Uh, I have a 5 up and vulnerable save because I called a wah. And I've got a five up feel no pain. There's a pain boy in there. And only one of the boys falls over. Second war, war walker fires in with for 2d6 plus 8 shots. And that is 18 this time. Let's see if this one's going to hit better, even though it's not guided. Threes. And re-rolling up hit. Then wounding on fives. And re-rolling up wound. So that's three wounds. Uh, four, four wounds. wounds. Four again. Five up. Thinking about I'll touch one of your dice, look. And the feeling of the pains. Uh, okay, so four orcs have died in total. Now the wind riders are going to fire into the same unit as well. We're adding on the Farseer and the Warlock. Yep. These assault weapons hit on threes. These are all the Shuriken Shurikens, and you can reroll one of them. And it's strength four, twin linked. So fives to wound, and you can reroll all of them, which is good because there's only one wound so far. <laughs> Five came through. I've got my invulnerable save though. Didn't make any of them. I've got my feel no pain though. And I make four of them. What? After the wind riders fired into the unit of boys, they move, shoot, move for one CP, jumping back, tactically repositioning at the edge of the battle grid. And then the wave serpent fired in with its assault weapons as well. The twin net shook and catapult came into the boys and didn't wound them. And that is the end of Eldari turn one. They pick up five points for area denying the centre of the battle grid, but they haven't scored no prisoners yet, as we go into Murphy's War, turn one.
So it's five points to zero to the Eldar, and here's Murphy's orders, and he's a bit confused already. Deploy a teleport homer either in the enemy backfield or in the center, both of which I can't do in turn one. Assassinate one of the pointy-eared leaders. That's going to be really tricky in turn one as well. So it turns out I can't do any of my secondaries, but what we can do is put some pressure on the pointy ears. So a bit of movement down here because only this mech gun can now see the wave serpent and the war biker. It advanced round this way. I thought about going that way, but I'll be in a fire prism hell. So I went this way. Uh, Murphy and his boys got out of the Morkonaut before it moved because it's not an assault vehicle but you can assault if you disembark from vehicles before they moved and the idea is to crack it open go charging in beat up all the um, all the bone constructs in there that are only toughness 7 with a 4 up and vulnerable save I'm not scared uh, over here all the mech guns are also looking at the wave serpent as well and round here I spent SCP on here we go lads it gives you plus 2 to your advance and plus 2 to your charge and then I rolled a 1 I wanted to try and make a first turn charge against some of the war walkers on this side. And as I've moved danger close to the Eldari, they're going to overwatch. Overwatching with a guided one, 2d6 plus 8 shots. Hitting on sixes, it is overwatch. But you can reroll everything because it's still guided. And in the end, five hits come through. Five to wound. And you can reroll one of them. And that is one wound, one, a five plus invaluable save, and one, feel no pain, you kill a boy. Uh, oh, I also forgot, actually, because I was talking to you off camera. Remember I said off camera, I'm going to do the grot orderly? I'm going to do the grot orderly. What it is, is once per battle, my pain boy eats this fella, and it gives him super strength. So with his super strength, he's able to pick up the three boys. And that one he just killed, I put it back in again. Right, let's crack open that wave serpent, firing my first mech gun in. Custom mega cannon has D6 shots for four shots. I hit on Grot, which is fours, one hit. Strength 12 versus toughness nine, does a wound. It becomes AP minus two, but you've got loads of cover. So AP minus one. Four up save. And you fail the save. This is D6 damage. And that is four damage. Now, custom mech guns are hazardous. So if I roll a one, I don't roll a one, I'd have taken three wounds as well. The wave serpents are nine wounds remaining. Now we're going to fire these two custom mega cannons at the same target. And I have 12 shots. It's a perfect roll. Fours to hit. 12 shots, but only four of them, three of them hit. Um, two wounds. Again, you have got cover. So two, four up saves. What are you doing? I'm going to use one fate dice. Okay. Which was a four, so that makes the four up save. It's almost like Eldar players don't want to play 40k and roll dice. No, I just want to decide what happens. Okay. I like that. And then I'm going to roll it and, yes. you know, as oh. fate foretold, it's going to be a four. It's a two. That's, that's half a four. That's <laughs> half a four. Another d6 damage, and that's another four damage. And both of these are hazardous, so don't roll any ones. I don't roll any ones. The Wave Serpent is on. Five wounds remaining, so let's fire everything from the Morkonaut into it. Now, I know what you're thinking, Heathage. You're thinking, you're hitting on Orcs, it's going to be fine. Orcs hit on fives, it's just the Grots that hit on fours. Isn't that exactly what you're thinking? That, is, that is what I'm thinking. Thank, thanks, Heathage. What it is, is though, he's got a rule. He's got big and shooty. Each time a model makes a range attack during the battle round, which you call a war. Do you remember me calling the war? I do remember if we call He gets plus one to hit. He hits on on, on Gretchen oh, I now. I can't see that from here. I, no, I think it says, he's lying. No, think, it's, no, that's what it... No. So, we're going with a custom Mega Blaster. Fours to hit. Everything misses. It's hazardous as well. It's, mm. And I don't lose a wound yet. That's the little one in his chest. This one here, in his, this big one here, is the custom Mega Zapper. This is D6 plus three shots. So seven shots. Fours to hit. Hit three times again. It's becoming a theme. Strength 10, toughness nine? Toughness nine. Threes to wound. A wound twice, at AP minus two, uh, and no cover from the Gorkonaut. So two, five up saves. You haven't made an invulnerable save yet on this. Oh, let's see if I do. I no. don't. No. 2d6 damage. It's on five wounds remaining. And now it dies. And you don't roll a six, so no deadly demise. And we've got to roll for all the stuff inside. Emergency disembarkation is happening. Rolling six dice, one for every model inside. And on a one, that's a mortal wound to the unit. 
the Wraith host emergency disembark from the back hatch, trying to put as much distance between them and dreaded howling Mad Murphy as possible. To be fair, though, it was a bit of a ballsy move, rocking right up in the center of the board with the Wave Serpent. Right, I've got one more thing that is left to fire, and it is this Shock Jump Dragster. He's going to fire his rockets down here. Now, you're going to look, they've got minus one to hit, right? Minus one, yes. But he's also got a custom shock rifle. You know the thing on the side? Mm -hmm. It's got precision shots. Mm. If I hit, I can apply it to one of your characters in the unit. Anyway, let's do the rockets first though, shall we? Because there's D3 shots for the three shots, but it's got blast, so four shots. But you stealthed up, you concealed them. So I'm hitting them on sixes, so a miss. So we're coming on to the custom shock rifle. Now you see this little grot on the side? He's got more brains than an orc. So he normally hits on threes, but he'll hit on a four. Is it really saying much if they have more brains than an it's orc? It's not saying much no, at it's, all. It's not. He's got a bit of a brain. The orc is, uh, his brain was blown out some time ago and the mech doc, um, he just stuffed his head full of bubble wrap. And yeah. It seems to work. Fours to hit. A miss. Uh, it's hazardous. Take three wounds on myself. <laughs> <laughs> if I'd have hit it, strength eight minus two, d6 plus one damage on one of your little... This is what happens when you uh, apply precision to an orc vehicle. It shouldn't be a thing, should it? It, 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 it looked up and hit itself in the face. <laughs> anyway, shooting phase done. Fighting is where it's at. We're going to start with this unit of boys that have got... Here we go. So it's a plus two inch charge to hit that wall walker. I need a seven. And that's an eight, of course. Of course we get in there. Crump, the boys go in against that skinny chicken walker. Now we come round here to Murphy and the boys go flying in to the Wraith host. He needs a seven inch charge as well. It looks like I'm using that CP. Mm -hmm. CP reroll. Double one, double one. And that's a nine. Crump, howling mad Murphy makes the charge. Now we're gonna fight. And as we all know, Murphy is a generous soul, so he's letting the lads go first. So six of these knobs are big choppers, which are strength seven. What's your toughness? Seven. On charge. Well, because of the wire, I got plus one strength and attack. So I've got all of these to hit you. And they would normally hit on threes, but hitting on twos because I'm being led and by a war boss. And let's not forget, sixes explode. Adding the explosions back in, everything hit. So strength eight with the wire, toughness seven. Freeze to wound. And that's minus one, two damage. What's your normal save? Two. Of course it is. So three up saves. <laughs> and Each failed save is two damage. So that's one, two damage. That's two damage. That's two damage. That's two damage. That's two damage. One was injured already. So I think three of them fall over. And there's still four claws let to go. Right, now the four power claws would be in on fours, but freeze because there's a boss nearby. So we pull these away. And then how many sixes? Three sixes. One of them missed. Strength 10 with the wire. So freeze to wound. And these are minus two. Four up saves. That looks pretty good. That's how much damage each? Uh, two damage each. So that kills all your Wraith Guards. All the Wraith Guard. And a couple of wounds on the dude. Then Murphy grabs his huge chopper. That thing there. Extra attack on charge. He's gonna he's gonna pick on that little leader. Okay, so only four of them hit, but sixes explode. So six of them hit. He strength 12, which is 13, but it would have been attacking the whole unit. This happens all at the same time. So it's threes to wound that unit. And your little spirit seer needs to make three four plus invulnerable saves. He's already taken two wounds and he gets taken out as well. That is the squad. But Wraith Blades have a chance to fight back. There are five there. And on fours, they fight before they go. And that is three of them. So as those models were destroyed, three of them get to fight back. While they were destroyed, the spirit steer was still alive. So instead of hitting on fours, they're hitting on threes. And they get lethal hits. Three attacks each. And yes. Freeze. Okay. Five hits come through. Strength seven, toughness five, but knobs. Knobs are minus one to wound. So instead of threes to wound, fours to wound. And, two and that wounds is and a six. two wounds. 
Uh, well, I've got my five up and vulnerable save right now because of Dewa. And I make one fail one and it's two damage. You kill a boy. Very risky putting that thing there at the beginning of the game. I am, I appreciate the braveness. I think it was worth it. It was worth a chance. Yeah. And I got, they still got the command points from back from doing it. Yeah. So it wasn't like it was a wasted effort. And, no. you know, anything, this may not have happened. I could have destroyed that in my yeah. first turn, but, you know, movement came first, so. Yeah, and you've still got Guardians in reserve and some Wraith Guard in reserve. Now, in 10th edition, one of the things you can do is you can't consolidate three inches anymore unless it brings you an engagement range of an enemy model. And if you can't do that, you can consolidate three inches to get in range of an objective, like that one. So we consolidate back like that. And now let's go over here to the big mob of boys attacking a war walker. We've piled him. The pain boy has a power claw and the knob in that unit has a power claw and they have the same number of attacks and things so I'll do them together. Normally three attacks but four attacks because of wow. And hit on fours though because there's no war boss nearby. So I only hit five times but three of them explode. So hit eight times. <laughs> Strength ten. Four. Four up saves. Each doing two wounds. That's six wounds. How many do they have? The War Walker has six wounds. The boys pile in. Of course they do. Snowballing straight into the second War Walker. Who can kick back at them. Yeah. What does he so kick out on? Three attacks. Yes. Hit on freeze. Okay. Kicky legs. He hits me twice. Strength five. Really? That's yeah. quite tough. Toughness Strength five. Fours. No wounds. No wounds. No wounds caused in return. And the boys have taken out three scalps in turn one. How awesome is that? We've taken down a war walker. We've taken down the wave serpent. We've taken down the entire unit inside of the wave serpent, but we haven't deployed a teleport homer <laughs> or done the other objective. I did. I assassinated someone. I killed that spirits here. So that's five points, which means it'll be five points each to the, or uh, to the orcs at the end of Eldar turn one. And this is your footprint right now right in the corner of the battle grid but there are some strategic reserves to come on and i have declared my wow so no more five plus and vulnerable save across the line this turn as we go on to eldari turn two craftworld oofway pick up five points on the primary so it's ten to five to the eldar they've got, kept no prisoners they want to kill stuff and engage on all fronts in the command phase, you've got another fake point dice for holding on to that one there. And you rolled a three. And then you've put conceal on the bikers one more time. So minus one to hit them and guide on the bikers this time. Mm -hmm. So they're re-rolling all hits because there's a potential. They move 14. They could move over here, shoot and get over here for engage on all fronts. And whether the Wraith Guard come in as well, because I don't know if I mentioned it in my movement pace, I don't think I did. This shock drum drags to teleported all the way over here. You're just trying to put some threats down onto the Eldari line in that quarter. Anyway, let's move on to the Oath Waves movement phase and see what they do. Here we are after the Eldari movement phase. The Wind Riders have dash forward no doubt they're going to do a drive by and the reserves are coming on the second unit of guardians have come on this edge mm -hmm. the other unit of guardians are staying down there and the war walker has fallen back i think it looks like you're going to put a lot of firepower into the boys down here i'm going to kill them you're going to kill them and the plan is to engage on all fronts right is to move shoot move with these to get them up into this quarter yep yeah because in the other quarter all the way over here the Wraith Guard have walked on from your board edge. So you're engaging on three fronts, which will get you three CP. But this could be a very painful shooting phase from the Eldari, as I don't have an Invun right now, except for the things that do naturally have Invuns. So some things naturally have Invuns. Like I think that's got a six up. So some of them, and that's got a five up. But apart from that, what have the Romans ever done for us? Oh, so geez. we're going to start here with the Wind Riders, the Warlock Skyrunner and the Farseer Skyrunner. Firing at, my, in, at the big squad of boys with the pain boy in it. Here's all the shuriken catapults, all hitting on threes. And a re-rolling because you guided that entire unit. And these are strength four. One miss. One miss. So strength four versus toughness five means you're wounding on fives. But they're twin linked. So you're re-rolling all of these as well. Because there's much less re-rolls in the game. Unless you play Eldari. Uh, nothing wounded. Good job they got a reroll for the twin link. <laughs> what? You thought that happened? 
Oh, see. look at that. That converted. Nine wounds came through at AP minus one. Now, there's something with the orcs that I vehemently disagree with. You know, AP minus one, they had t shirt saves, would go straight through the t shirt. Yeah. They don't have t shirts anymore. They've mm. found ways to sellotape and staple armor to themselves. Now they have a five up safe. I preferred it when they just had t-shirts. Mind you, I suppose, if you'd suddenly discovered that you had a stapler in the bottom of the drawer and you could staple it straight through into your skin, you would. So these are six up saves. And I make four of them. Lol. Then do they feel pain? Uh, well, three of them do. Now we have shuriken cannons. And they hit on threes. And then you've got the twin linked, And that's a sustained hit. So that is seven out of six hits. Uh, what's the strength of a shuriken cannon these days? It is strength six. Strength six, toughness five, wounding on threes. Any more shenanigans with that weapon type? I can choose to reroll one. Okay. Uh, minus one. Okay, so six is. How much damage? Two. Oh dear. Can I make any fives? No, four of them are dead. So spending one of the fake dice with the Farseer converting the one to a six. And uh, this is nine shots, actually, with Blast. Should have done it first. But he hits on what now? Threes? Threes. Okay. And it's still guided, and it still counts as a weapon. So you still get to re-roll all these hits. Strength six. Toughness five. Threes to wound. And you've done your re-roll. AP? AP minus two. I don't get a save. How much damage? Uh, D3 damage each. Really? Okay. Roll for them. That much damage. There's five boys remaining with the pain boy, and now you have Destructor, which is Torrent. D6 for one hit. Strength? Uh, five. Toughness, five. Wounds, AP? Minus one. Six up. How much damage? One. Five up for no pain. He doesn't feel the pain. After that shooting attack, the drive-by is complete, spending a strat for move, shoot, move. And they're now down in my table quarter, engaging on all fronts. Now we're coming across to the guardians that just came in from strategic reserves, taking aim at the remaining boys with their shuriken catapults. Threes to hit. We did the reroll, it hit. Strength four, top of five. Five to wound. And minus one, I need to make six sixes. I don't make any sixes. Can I make any of the feeling of the pains? I make two of them. That leaves the knob with the pain boy. And the shuriken cannon fires in and hits twice and wounds on threes and wounds twice. Got to do these individually because the knob takes two wounds and he's got two wounds and now he's dead. Then the pain boy, he's going to take two wounds, still leading the unit at this time. And he takes two wounds and he's down to one remaining. Now we're moving across to this fire prism, which is going to put his two shuriken catapults into the pain boy on one wound remaining. And the big Lance of Doom is coming into the Morkonaut. Are we starting off with the Shuriken Catapults? Yep. Starting off with the Shuriken Catapults. Do you want to use your reroll here so you're not using it on the Morkonaut? Uh, no. No? Okay. That's three hits. And five to wound. Five to wounds. Um... Two wounds. I do get cover. So two, five up saves. He's dead because he's no longer leading a unit. So he doesn't get feel no pain. And you wipe out that threat. And all they did was kill a war walker. But uh, yeah, lots of Eldar Good firepower vengeance. came in and smashed into them. Now we've got two crack shots coming into the Morkonaut. Shots hit on freeze. can re-roll that. Okay, both of them hit. Strength 18, toughness 12. Uh, so freeze again. Both of them wound. Five plus invulnerable save on Gorka. Fail them both. That will be dead unless I spend a CP. So let's spend a CP. It's alive on two wounds remaining. What do you want to do with the second one then, Heathage? Well, I wanted Surely to... you don't want to fire it anymore. Well, I wanted to kill it. Yeah. And then I wanted to put different kinds of prism shots into these. Into ones. them. But, you know, you didn't let me do that. Yeah, I this didn't. Is, this is outrageous. So into the Gorkonaut. Uh, we're going to do t we're going to do the shuriken catapults first again into the into the boys into the boys. Okay, here we go. Shuriken catapults. Hit on freeze. Spend your thing to re-roll them. No. Okay. Strength <laughs> four, toughness five. Uh, it's, uh, one you, wound. Well, spend your thing to uh, actually. No, I say toughness five. They are minus one to wound, so you don't wound them at all. 
for them. Can the big cannon of doom hit the Gorkonal? Here's the question. Hitting on threes. I can reroll both. Okay. Okay. Winning on threes. Winning on threes. I can reroll both. So what you're saying is two fives and I'm okay. I got this. I got this. Mm. I make both of my invulnerable saves, both fire prisons far in at the Gorkonaw, and the power of Gork and Mork compels me to stay alive. But now we move round to the Orc encampment where this unit of Wraith Guard, last unit left the fire, are going to be firing in at this shock jump dragster. Um, do they hit on fours? Hit what did on I read? Fours. They do hit on fours. That's why the Spirit Seer is a thing. So four shots with their D cannons. Can you slap me with a D? You only hit once, twice, but you can reroll one of them. One of them. Okay. What's the strength of D cannons these days? Fourteen. That's a big D. I'm toughness seven. So you're winning on twos. Winning on twos. Everything wins. Yep. Um, Shock Dumb Dragsters have a six up and vulnerable save. I'm assuming it's going straight to the vulnerable save because yeah. they're really powerful guns. Minus four, but it's Minus devastating four. wins. Devastating. Yeah. You didn't roll any sixes to wound, did you? I don't think so. No. I make one of my invulnerable saves. It's got nine wounds, 2d6 damage with these two shots. And you only do three wounds. And you've spent a fate yeah. dice to re-roll and do some shenanigans. It's on six wounds remaining. Somehow it's still alive. That is the end of the Eldar shooting phase. They are not charging anywhere. So that is the end of turn two for the Eldari. They are engaging on all fronts for three points and they've killed two whole units, that big mob of boys with the pain boy with them, giving them seven points on the secondaries, making it 17 points to five for the Eldari at the end of their turn two. But I am actually on one, two, three objectives, which will propel the boys into the lead as we go into Orcs turn two. So it's 20 points to 17 for the boys picking up all those primaries, which is surprising the crap out of me and Murphy. Here are Murphy's orders, and they're a lot better. Attempting target. Get an objective in no man's land that Heathage nominates, and I'm quite close to all of them. And extend my battle lines. Hold on to my home field objective and one in no man's land for another five points. Here we are after the orc movement phase. The Aldari have nominated this objective down here as the tempting target because you basically are close to all the other ones anyway. You could have got all of them and you don't want the shock drum drags to buggering off. So it's going to stay there. Um, I'm, he's just revving his engines. He's fine. The other shock drum dragster has revved forward this way because look, there's loot. So even though he's still in def, he, mm, I could move him flat out, flat out. I'm going to move him flat out because your guys shoot 18 inches, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go around here, which means he isn't shooting, but then he jumps out and has a look at all these loot. And then that should hide me from your rate. Yeah, you're going to have to come around. So he's, he's, it's not very orky, but it is very orky because there's a chunk of loot here. I did spend that CP on two inches plus two inches to advance and charge on a unit and Murphy's unit did not advance, mm -hmm. but I've also got plus two inches to charge. Here we go, to send me down into the Eldari lines and then the Morkonaut stepped forward. The war boss on the bike came speeding forward right up the middle of the battle grid. And then Heath they said, I'm gonna overwatch you because that Gorkonaut's on two wounds remaining. And guess what? Strands of fate. One of these could be an auto hit on a six. So the prison cannon in focus mode auto hits on a six and the other shot, because it is two shots, doesn't hit. But you can reroll that if you want to. Oh, I can actually. And doesn't hit. Uh, the shuriken cannons are going to go into the knobs. We'll do that in a minute. Um, okay, focus mode. Threes to wound. That's a wound. That is a wound. So what you're saying is five up in vulnerable save or my yeah. Gorgonaut dies. Don't do it. Are you ready? It's alive. Mm. That's a five up invulnerable save. The power of Gork protects me. It's it's good. It's... I think you need to re-roll that. Okay, I'll re-roll yeah, it. I think you need to re-roll that. See, I'm still fine. <laughs> <laughs> Shuriken catapults did not hit my unit of knobs. So you fired at the Morkonaut. He's going to fire back. He's very, very angry. But uh, he's in on sixes right now because he's very degraded. So let's do the custom mega blaster at that fire prism. Oh, it has three shots. And it hits on sixes, and I get one hit through. It is strength nine. Doesn't wound. Custom Mega Blaster is hazardous. And 
See, the thing is, if I roll a one, he's on two wounds right now. And mm -hmm. when you fail a hazardous check, vehicles take three wounds. Mm -hmm. And the custom Mega Zapper fires at it as well. And it's hazardous. So this could be mutually assured destruction. D6 plus three shots, which will hit your Fire Prism on sixes. I don't hit. And if I roll a one, I kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> Eldar shooting won't bring me down. Orc shooting will bring me down. On a six, it blows up. At least it doesn't blow up. And that is the end of the Morkinor. Okay, Heath, let's fire some more hazardous weapons because it works so well. We're doing the rocket launcher into the shotgun dragster and the custom shock rifle. Here's the rocket launcher, and it's got four shots. You can see it, so I'm hitting you on sixes. Nothing. Now we're on to the custom shock rifle. This is the hazardous one. I need a four and I miss you and it's hazardous and I'm okay. That was the precision shot one again. Again, no business firing precision shots. Let's go on to the custom mega cannons firing in at this unit of bikers down here. They have D6 shots each. Last time I rolled 12, this time it's a nine. Nine shots, hitting on fives. Look at that, that's four hits. Strength 12 into the bikers, choose to wound them. Four wounds. So these two are taking five up saves at the front. Brilliant. And then two more five up saves. Okay, only one gets through. And then we D6 damage on a killer biker. And that is the end of the orc shoe phase. I killed a biker. Yay! I also killed my Morkadot. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to charge. Murphy and his wah are going to go flying in against that fire prison. Remember, plus two to the charge with here we go. And that is a five, seven inch charge. The knobs make the charge, then pile in, and then we strike that fire prism. Okay, here's all the power claws. I'm strength nine, your toughness nine. So I'm spending a CP on unbridled carnage. And what that means is fives explode instead of just sixes explode. And in the end, we only get one explosion, plus one to hit there because of Murphy. So these are gonna need force to wound. And I do two wounds. Two fire up saves. Here's all the big choppers. Now these will hit on twos. Fives and sixes explode. Quite a few sustained hits there, but can I wound on fives? Seven come through, that's seven four up saves and you're spending a fake dice. Yep. So one auto passes. And these are the remaining four up saves. Nine, wow, one. okay. So two more damage go through. Only two wounds through in total. It's on eight wounds left, don't worry. Murphy can smack it. No, he can't. He misses twice. <laughs> His huge topper's rent 12. He wounds once. That's another. Minus two. Two damage. Another. Five up save. And, I'm and you make it. So only do four wounds to that fire prism that can rev its engines and fight back. Rev, rev, went the engines. No wounds caused on that knobs unit. And that is the end of Orcs turn two. Didn't kill very much this turn at all, actually. But um, I am extending my battle lines. And I did get the other thing, attempting target, which propels the Orcs a long way into the lead. But I don't think they're going to be there for very long because this Eldari force is incredibly deadly. And I've put my prized possession right down in their deployment zone. As we go on to Eldari turn three. How many objectives are you on as well? You're only on that one back there. Interesting. It is 22 points to the Eldari and 30 points to Murphy and his war. So Farseer decides to bring it down an overwhelming force. This is kill vehicles. There's a lot of vehicles on the table. An overwhelming force is kill stuff in range of objectives. And the Orcs, they're all in range of many objectives. This is a good draw. Here we are in the movement phase. Uh, you got another fake dice with this unit of defenders who are defending this fire prison back here from Murphy. While the one that was in combat has fallen out of combat because he wasn't much good in there. You want to put a lot of shots into Murphy's unit and you can't shoot at infantry in melee. You can shoot into melee if it's against a vehicle or a monster. Murphy is a bit of a monster, come on now. Um, so yeah, so falling back here, gaining ACP, then you spent one of your strands of fate dice. So this unit of Guardian Defenders that came on last turn did the big advance. They move 13 and they have assault weapons. Yeah. And they're gonna be firing in at the shock jump dragster. Your Farseer over here in this unit has concealed this unit one more time. And you've guided this unit one more time and you're looking at the mech guns. Yeah. 
and also the shop jump drag. So then we've got to go all the way down to the other end of the battle grid where the Wraith Guard managed to uh, come round the side of this enclosed building here and there's three of them in range that can shoot at the shock jump, shock jump dragster. Now, each shock jump dragster that you kill is worth two points for bring it down. These mech guns are worth two points for bring it down and shock jump dragsters are in range on objectives. So those are overwhelming forces as well. Basically, killing the shock jump dragsters gets the Eldari a lot of points as we go into their shooting phase. So we're starting the shooting phase with this unit of Guardian Defenders lighting up the shock jump dragster trying to get loads of points. Threes to hit them. Not spending any fake dice on any of the hitting yet, but of course you do get your free reroll. Fives? Yes. With your reroll. And these are all a minus one AP. A minus one, I need to make seven five up saves and I only make one, which is six damage. It's on six wounds remaining because Hazardous was a thing and he blew his own head off and he blows up. He doesn't blow up. He just crumples. That is already four points right there. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect it either. Moving from the Defenders onto the Wind Riders, firing everything in to my mech guns. Here are the Shuriken Catapults. These are hitting on threes. Hitting on threes. Rerolling everything because of Guide. Okay, and these uh, mech guns are basically like big orc boys. They're toughness five with a five up save. So still wounding on fours. And you can reroll ones to wound against uh, with Skyrunners, Windriders, whatever they're called. So two come through at minus one. So two, six up saves. One of the little Gretchen goes, ah. Two shuriken cannons hitting on threes. Rerolling everything. Wounding on threes. Reroll one of them. And this is minus one? Yep. Uh, sixes? How much damage? Two damage. Two damage. One, two, so... Dead. That's another vehicle dead for bring it down. And now we have the psychic attacks. Firing in a destructor. Using your fate dice. And you're using the two? For yep. only two auto hits? No, for six, because Farseer Winters has granted it. Two. It's not a thing. Six auto hits. A strength six. Strength five. Strength five, okay. Hit on fours. Nice. Four wounds. AP? Uh, minus one. Okay, so six is coming up. Uh, four of the grots die. There's two wounds left in that unit. And then your Farseer also has an attack. So Eldritch Storm, D6. Yep. Okay. Uh, for two. two. And he's going to hit on threes hit with on guys. Threes. And wound on? Uh, strength six, so wounded on threes. Okay. No wounds. He's command pointing it. Farseer Winters is a crazy mad lad and it doesn't wound and the mech gun is still alive with one little grok who's hiding behind it going, what's that all about? While all this gun firing and psychic shenanigans was going on, meanwhile in the backfield, the second unit of Guardians are unloading on Murphy and his knob. Zzz. Threes. Threes to hit. Strength 4 versus toughness 5, but minus 1 to wound while a war boss is leading them. So 6s, and you can reroll one of these as well. So I've got 2 so through so far. 3 6s. Three three. At minus 1, yep. they normally have a 4 up save, but I am not getting cover from this attack. So 5s. One of them dies. Shuriken Cannon. One freeze. Hits all the times. Strength? Uh, 6. Toughness 5. Uh, fives to one wound, one wound, AP minus one again. And I failed that save, and I think that's two damage. That's two wiped out. Then we checked it was sustained hits on that cannon, so two more wounds come through, and both of those wound as well. Fives, and I lose another boy, losing three knobs. Always painful when you lose a couple of knobs. Uh, the war walker was lined up here to shoot at the shock jump dragster, which is already dead. So he's going to fire into the knobs instead. Not doing the blast version because it's strength four and I'm toughness five with minus one to wound. So it'll be sixes. So instead you're doing two straight shots, which hit on threes. And you can reroll one of them. And only one hit. And strength eight, toughness five, but fours to wound. Strength ten. Is it? Yeah. Okay, so instead of twos to wound, threes to wound. Their missile launcher went up quite a lot. Yeah. AP? AP minus two. Minus two, minus one because of obscuredness. And how much damage? D6. Okay. One of them just explodes. 
Now, before we do the wave serpent, which has obviously got a good shot in at Murphy over there, it can also thread the needle and hit the shock jump dragster. But before it needs to, let's see if the Wraith Guard are able to kill it this time, so because there's three of them that can hit, and they hit on fours. Hit on fours. And... We roll one of them. Okay, so they all hit. Strength 14, Strength you said? Strength 14. That's ridiculous. Two's the wound. Two's the wound. With a reroll. I can reroll one of them. Okay. okay, AP? Minus four. I still need to make sixes. Last time I made two sixes. No, this, this time, time you won't. I'm going to make all three. I don't make any. Three D6 damage. And that is a dead shock jump dragster, which is also in range of an objective, which is also a vehicle. Then we come back to the fire prism, picking on Murphy's unit. This time you're doing the disperse mode. So 2d6. Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, and it hits on threes. In on threes. Yes. And then... And reroll two of them. Yes. In on threes. Okay. Strength six. Strength six. So yeah. fours to win against knobs. Moving on fours. Okay. I can reroll two of them. Right. So that is four wounds at four AP wounds. minus two. Yeah. A unit are not wholly within that train piece. So I need to make sixes or they're dead because they have two wounds each. I make two sixes, Heathage. Then Sheridan and Catpots fire in and they hit on threes. threes. And that's going to wound on a six. And it doesn't wound. And that is the end of the Eldari shooting phase. Do you want to charge your guardians against Murphy and the knobs? I really recommend it. It's going to go very well for them. Murphy bellows a challenge, but of course the Guardians calmly ignore that threat. They've seen orcs before, and that is the end of Eldari. Turn three, they propel themselves into the lead, picking up seven points for Bring It Down and five points for Overwhelming Force, putting them on 34 points to my 30. And apart from Murphy sticking his nose in over there, and the war boss with his bike is here, all I've got left is a unit of mech guns on the right and a unit of mech guns on the left. But I am still on one, two objectives, which will drag me straight back into the lead again. I'm gonna need to do a chunk of battle shock tests as well. So let's start over here with the mech guns, which is a battle shock, so I can't spend any stratagems on here. And Murphy's unit, of course he's not battle shocked. As we go to orcs, turn three. Murphy wants to get behind enemy lines with one or two units and of course he's already there and no prisoners smash as many heads in as possible. So I've moved two units, both of the units of mech guns staying stationary. The war bikers coming in against your bikers. We'll find out who the bigger biker is and then round here Murphy is going to mop up and kill some guardians. But you gained a CP this turn so you're going to spend it on an overwatch again this turn. To try and do something about these bikers because this unit is still guided. Yeah. So six is to hit them with all of your shots. And you got some, some psychic stuff that auto wounds them, right? Auto hits. Auto one of them hits. hits one of them. Okay. So trying to thin the herd here. So, here are all the shuriken stuff and things. So sixes. Shuriken's hit on sixes and I can reroll all of it. Yes. Got it. Reroll the six. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's three hits. So that's okay. actually pretty that's good. That's pretty good. Fives to wound though, they are on bikes, they are Fives a bit to tough. Wound. Nella. Next up, two shuriken cannons, hitting on sixes, re-rolling everything. And there's one hit so far. Any more re-rolls? Okay, there's four hits, brilliant. Strength six. Toughness six, we're on bikes now, we're a bit tougher. So, fours. No wounds. Destructor, again using a strands of fate dice, meaning that there's six auto hits coming in. Uh, and these are toughness strength five, yeah. Destructor, toughness six, so Fine. fives to wound. That is four wounds. You still haven't done your re-roll to okay. wound yet. Are you holding on to it or are you doing I it now? I'm going to re-roll to wound. Okay. That is four wounds, AP. Minus one. Minus one, so four, five up saves. Uh, I failed two of them. Bikers. Bikers have three wounds each. One damage each. Now Eldritch Storm. D6 attacks. Plus one for blast. Six attacks. Hitting on sixes. Hitting on sixes. Rerolling everything for guide. That's one hit so far. Okay, two hits. Strength six, toughness six? Yep. Okay, force to wound. No wounds. 
So, that's the end of the Overwatch phase. The war bikers are going to shoot you back. Remember when the Gorknaw shot you back and killed yeah. himself? They're going to do the same. Well, I was going to say, at least their guns aren't hazardous. Those guys are going to shoot into the back of these guys. <laughs> these guys shoot stuff. them and kill them. That's exactly what's going to happen. That should definitely be an orky rule. Twin Daka guns in rapid fire range. I've got lots of shots. I'm hitting on sixes because they're concealed. Strength five versus toughness four is one wound. No AP, three up save, they're good. Uh, what does the war trike have these days? We have six death killer boomsticks, they all miss. Then we have the killer jet. Let's do the torrent version for D6 auto hits, four auto hits. And this is strength five, AP minus one, ignoring cover. So that's three wounds, three four up saves on the bikers. I'm gonna auto use one. You can auto pass one, okay, so two. <laughs> Four up saves on the bikers, and one of them takes a wound. Okay, now we're tickled one. Let's shoot at one with my mech gun, and I shoot six times. Fives to hit you because of concealment. Strength 12, twos to wound you. Two wounds, minus two. And you fail them both. It's d6 damage, so the injured one dies, and... Another one bites the dust. That's all the shots that they're going to attract in the shooting phase. There's three Wind Riders left with the Warlock and the Farseer because we're going to come around here to the other unit of mech guns, custom mega cannons, firing well, one minute, one minute, one minute. They have 18 inch range, haven't they? The Wraith Guard. Yes. So instead of shooting at them, I could shoot across the battlefield into a fire prison. Let's, uh... let's definitely do that. And I've got six shots and we hit on fours and this is strength 12 we're going to wound on threes and we wound twice and it's hazardous i forgot to do the hazardous on him he's okay the hazardous here we're okay two five up saves on the fire prism because <sighs> you've used the fate dice in the shooting phase already it's taken four wounds so far and this is 2d6 damage this could be painful that's six damage i'm going to command point one of them i haven't done that yet and I made it better by one. That's seven damage. Fire Prism is on one wound remaining. Then Murphy fired into this unit of Guardian Defenders. Didn't kill any. And then he's going to charge. And he charges four inches, which is enough to get them in. And this War Biker, he's going to charge in with the, with the War Bikers as well. And that's a six inch charge. So we'll start the fight phase down here. Knobs versus Guardians. There's three with Power Claws. They're going to hit on threes. No explosions there. And it's strength nine. I'm wounding on twos. And Guardians have a four up save now. Instead yes. of a six up save. Uh, five, five up save. Up save so you need to make four sixes. And I kill four of them. And Murphy's huge chopper. Hits three times. he wound on twos. He wounds three times. And we have three. Three more sixes coming up. And you save one. Then we come around here to the other war boss with the war bikers. Spinning a CP on Unbridled Carnage. Here's all the boys with their choppers. Unbridled Carnage means fives and sixes explode. We're hitting on twos as well because war boss. Strength four. Toughness four. Four seeing seven. Four up saves. And each does one damage. One was injured, so I killed two. And then we got the power claws. Here's the power claw from the knob. And he hits twice, strength nine. He wounds twice. These are minus two, two damage. And then he's got his strength 10, minus two, two damage attacks. Two more, five up saves. And the last uh, biker dies, leaving your two characters left. And then the snagger claw on my Death Killer War Trike. He's got four attacks. Okay. He's in on threes. Well, each time this model is leading a unit, each time a model in that unit, oh, it's plus one to hit as well on him. So he hits on twos. And remember I said fives and sixes explode. So they all explode. He wounds on twos. He gets three wounds through. And you can put these on your Farseer or the other guy. And then minus two, two damage each. But you haven't spent any of your strands of fate dice yet. 
Yep, so spending a strand of fate to ignore one of them, and then four up and vulnerable saves on the ca remaining characters, and one of them will take two wounds. The Warlock is down to one wound remaining, then the war bikers pile in, and that is the end of my fight phase. They get to fight back. So it turns out they got witch blades. Do you remember when they used to wound everything back on a two, no matter what? Yeah, it was a nice time. But what do they do now? They they just wound like normal. Oh, they have anti-infantry, so they wound on a two plus. So they insane. wound infantry on a two up is what it's saying. So yeah. if I was infantry, you'd still be wounding on twos? Yes. But what's their standard strength? Because I'm not infantry. Strength three. I'm, I'm toughness six. So we're wounded on sixes. <laughs> so I'll do different colours. Okay, right, so... Farsa hits on twos. Right. And so with the Farsa is going to be the blue dice. Right. So... He hits, and the Warlock hits on three, so everything three. hits. So six is to wound, then. Six is to wound. Not twos. You get a wound three. You get a wound. What's the AP? No AP. Oh. Look, I failed a save. It's you kill damage. a biker. Well, one was on one wound left. So he does take one out for vengeance. Yeah. For Cadia. After the fight back with the bikers, we did the fight back with the guardians. I'm loving this rule. Minus one to wound knobs with the war boss with them. Because he didn't cause any wounds but Murphy didn't get through his unit of guardians and this war biker on death killer war trike he didn't get through his unit either actually no I did kill a unit because what happened now is once they're split they count as three separate units so that one can go off in one direction he can go off in another direction but the uh, sky hunters that were there with them are dead so that will be two points for no prisoners and I am behind enemy lines with Murphy and his stuff so that's three points for being behind enemy lines so I get another five points and at the end of turn three it's looking pretty bleak for both sides you have an untouched unit of guardians over here and a fire prism and also your missile launcher dude this fire prism is still on one wound remaining so we'll be hitting on fours but uh, I'm not sure that Murphy will be long for this world and the wraith guard are somewhat isolated in the corner of the battle grid but after a couple of turns or in a turn or two, they could run forward and start camping on that objective. The Eldar are one point behind now. 44 points to 45. It's close, people, and they want to assassinate. They want to kill my Death Killer Wartrike or Howling Mad Murphy. And capture the enemy outpost? Well, that's a bit too far away. So Eldari movement phase turn four, trying to set up for turn five. With that in mind, this unit of guardians are moving closer to the war bikers. And both of the characters that were engaged in combat went right and left of the Orky outpost tower in the middle of the battle grid. War bikers are going to get lit up because you have assassinate in your hand and there's a death killer war trike there. But down here is Howlin' Mad Murphy with three remaining knobs. So the Guardian step back out of combat and you still have the missile launcher, War Walker over here. You still have this fire prism, which is uninjured over here. And you still have that fire prism yeah. uninjured over here. Many, many chances to try and get assassinated. But I'm telling you now, he's howling, he's mad, he's Murphy. He's an invulnerable save, he's a super cyborg body. He's got a four up feel, no pain, he'll be fine. Absolutely fine. In the backfield over here, though, are the Wraith Guard, and you spend a Strand of the Fate dice to all about six inches. Yep. So they've run round onto that objective. Hopefully they'll still be there. They should still be there in turn five, and that should get you an extra five points on the primaries in turn five, because next turn is the last turn, and right now there is only one point in it. There's so little left in either of our armies. I never thought it would come down to this. Do you know where you want to start your shooting phase? Are we starting with the Guardians? Are we starting with the Fire Prism? We're starting here with the War Walker into Howling Mad Murphy's unit. Hitting on two, uh, three, sorry. Yeah, doing three. straight shots. And you can re-roll one of them. And it's strength 10 versus toughness 2, uh, 5, but minus 1 to wound. So threes to wound them. Okay. And you can re-roll one of them. And... That is two wounds. AP. Minus two. Minus two. I have six up saves. I make one. How much damage? D6. They have two wounds each. And one explodes. Next up, the Fire Prism firing in as well. And you're using a Strands of Fate dice because it's 2d6 shots. And you're using Oak dice to make one of them a six. And then the other dice is a three. So that's 
Nine shots in disperse mode coming into Murphy. Which hit on threes. Threes. And you can re-roll one of them. I can re-roll two of them. Two of them. Oh yeah, it's a fire prism. And they everything hits. Hit. Strength six, toughness five, but minus one to wound, force to wound. Okay. Rerolling two of them. This is looking good. It's looking good. Right, seven wounds come through at minus one. They have two wounds each. So and this is minus one two damage. The first one is alive. The second one is alive. The third one is alive. The fourth one is alive. Look at that. Look at these Winter's heads. I love a bit of Winter's head. He's dead. Dead. Now we're on to Murphy. He's a war boss in mega armor. He is a flat two up save, which becomes a three up save. And of course he passes. His knobs are wiped out. And Murphy is still there going, oh, didn't need him anyway. This is the face. I'm stressing out. Yeah, this is the face of a man who thought, uh, who thought that, yeah, orcs, that'd be easy, right? Yeah, that, that shouldn't have happened. That shouldn't have happened. <laughs> because you were thinking, right, fire the fire prism in somewhere else, like maybe yeah. fire him up at these mech guns, but you've got assassinate in your hand. He stood there, look, he's howling, he's mad, he's Murphy, surely you have to shoot at him with a couple of your big guns. The thing is, though, he's got seven wounds, and you do a flat six damage. So... You need both of them to get through in order to kill him. And he's got a five up and vulnerable save and a four up feel no pain. I reckon he can tank it. I think he's going to be fine. So you're going to shoot an orc in the back. Yeah. You're going to do it. Yep. Focus mode. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two shots, threes to hit him. Good luck. You're going to need Forced it. Forced to hit because he's wounded. Forced to hit because he's injured. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he can reroll one of them. That's a hit. Uh, wounded on four. Uh, no, Two. Twos. It's okay. a wound. Five plus and vulnerable save. Ready? No. I fail it. Command point. I fail it. Okay, so that's six damage. Six damage. He is a super cyborg body. And he passes every single one of his feel no pain rolls. Then you spent a command point for move, shoot, move. So he's jumped forward onto this objective. So now you're covering multiple objectives again, trying to set up for turn five. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Then we're coming around here to the Guardians, firing at the bikers, and I'm going to spend a CP. You're going to love this, because most of their guns are strength four, right? Yeah. So you're thinking, well, that unit isn't minus one to wound. Well, hard as nails, one CP, minus one to wound them. Threes, Threes to hit. Reroll. Reroll one. Hard as nails, sixes to wound. A wound comes through. And I make that save. A second wound, because I can reroll one of them. Okay, one wound. Shrugging cannon. Freeze. Hits twice. Strength six. Toughness six. Zero wounds. And that is the end of Aldari turn. Four no charges coming on in the end. Only killing a couple of knobs over there. But what they have done is take every single objective apart from my home field objective over here. The Wraith Guard are on the one back in the Orc encampment. Fire Prism on one wound remaining holds the center. These Guardians are in range of that objective because uh, you they move a long way and you OC me off of that objective over there. And of course, the Guardians back here OC Howling Man Murphy off of this objective. You don't pick up any points on the secondaries, but you are zoning me out as we go to Orcs, turn four. So I pick up five points on the primaries, making it 50 points to Murphy's boys, to the Eldaris, 44. We're six points in the lead and bring it down. We want to kill one of those fire prisms and also defend our stronghold. Back in the Orc settlement, it's a cup of teas down there, mushroom beer. It's lovely. Mech guns are defending my stronghold. I'm confident both of these mech guns here, only one of those can see, can kill this wave serpent fire prism, sorry, on one wound remaining. That'll be bring it down. The only unit I moved was this unit of bikers that are going to go charging and killing all those guardians. Howlin' Mur Murphy's over there screaming at those other guardians. And you're overwatching one more time. Yeah. Disperse mode with this fire prism into the bikers, mm. trying to take them out of the equation. Using a strand of fake dice, which was a five, to make one of them a five, and then the other shot in disperse mode, because it's 2d6, that's seven shots coming in to the war bikers. I can't do the minus one to wound them right now, because you can only do that in your opponent's shooting or fight phase. And this is my movement phase. So, so we have seven shots that hit eight on shots sixes. Oh, yeah. Eight shots because of blast. 
sixes. And, and you can reroll a hit. I can reroll two of them. You can reroll two hits. <laughs> that is two hits. Strength six, toughness six. So false. Rerolling. Re -roll two of them. We have up wound at minus one, minus two damage. And I failed to save that will kill one of the bikers. Then we move on to the orc shooting phase. The bikers open up with their twin dacker guns, but you have lightning fast reactions. So all of these shots will hit on sixes instead of fives. At strength four, they wound on threes, and that's AP minus one because you're within nine inch range. So one five up save to keep one alive. And one dies screaming, oh no, I've been alive for a million years. I learned carpentry in my last path, but now I'm suddenly dead. Um, and then the death killer jet from him, he does a wheelie and he auto hits you four times and auto and wounds you twice. And those are two five up saves because they're minus one. And there goes the plumber as well. So I've killed two in that squad. We're now coming across to this custom mega cannon. I've got bring it down as a target. There is a big gun. A fire prism on one wound remaining. And I shoot at it twice. I'm gonna hit it on fours. I miss, okay. And it's hazardous. At least it doesn't blow up in my face. This mech gun is gonna fire through at that one. Are you ready? Yes. The other one can't see. I fire once. I'm gonna spend one of my two CPs. I fire three times. Really need to kill this thing. I have bring it down. I hit him once, strength 12. I wound it, AP minus two becomes AP minus one. It is my shooting phase. Are you spending a strand of fate dice? Yeah. Okay, he, he uses, for, okay. I don't worry, he's you. That's fine, I don't bring it down, cool. strands of fate. Hazardous on that gun, and I'm fine. These guns are vehicles, by the way, so if I do fail, I take three wounds. Okay, so uh, Murphy's going to shoot a couple of his shooters in as well at the Guardians he wants to charge. Murphy killed two of them with his gun, then he goes charging in. Crump swings his huge chopper and hits three times and wounds three times. The Eldar failed the save, he wipes them out, turns his back on that fire prison there. <laughs> because he's snacking on the flesh of the Eldar. Meanwhile, the other war boss and his death killer war trike go slamming in to this unit of guardians. And we're going to spend that CP on fives explode again one more time because they're troops in range of that objectives and they OC quite high. So, yeah, I want them dead. Unbridled carnage. They're hitting on twos because of war boss and they explode. Wounding on threes because of puny Eldar. Four five up saves and the boys take out two of them. Then the boss knob with his claw hits once and wounds once and that'll be a six up save. Another Eldar bites the dust and then the four attacks with the snagger claw with the war boss. And look at that. He managed to get six hits through with unbridled carnage, but only wounds three times. And that is three more six up saves on the Eldar guardians. And uh, two of them survive. Then the Eldar fought back and actually put one of the wounds on the war bikers. And that is the end of turn four. I haven't brought it down. I have started defending my stronghold, which will get me three points. But more importantly, I've pushed you off of that objective and this objective. Because war bikers have an OC of two and the death killer war track OC of three. So I've actually got 11 to your eight here. Yes. So you pick up five, 10 points on the primaries. This game is as close as close can be as we move on to the end phase, the end game. I'm definitely gonna ditch, bring it down. I want a free CP as we go on to Eldari, turn five. The Space Pixies are winning by four points. How did that happen? 54 points to 50. And you kept assassinate, kill Murphy. And you want to storm hostile objective control. In the Eldari movement phase, you've already stormed a hostile objective. Because Murphy has an OC of 1, that tank has an OC of 3. So that's 5 points right there. Kill him 5 more points, right? Yep. And then I am defending my stronghold. Now, you've already scored your primaries. So the Wraith Guard 
have moved forward off of the objective that they're on. And the Warlock and the Fire Seer and the Fire Prism are all kind of looking down at this unit of two mech guns over here, thinking we'll shoot the crap out of them. Meanwhile, down here, the Guardians are just then locked up in combat with the bikers. Why are you saying locked up? I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't see the. I don't need to move them, I don't think. Yeah, uh, even if they all die, I don't think it affects what you're trying to do in turn five, which is murder Murphy and murder the mech guns down here. So let's go into the shooting phase and see if this grand plan comes together. Starting with five Wraith Guard into the mech guns. And I know what you're thinking. Why don't you spend Arda's nails on them so they're minus one to wound? Well, you can't do it against vehicles or Gretchen's. And these are both vehicles and Gretchen's. So uh, five shots hitting on fours. And you've got the reroll. And that is four hits. Wounding on twos, AP minus gazillion. Everything wins. Now, mech guns. They have six up and vulnerable saves. They're a kind of round shackle. Do you blow off a bit I don't need? You blow off, see, two bits. Two bits get blown off that I don't need. So the first D cannon shot does D6 wounds for four damage. And the second one kills one of the mech guns. One mech gun remaining. We have shuriken catapults coming in from the warlock. Two shots hitting on threes. With the reroll, both of them hit, fives to wound. With the reroll, at minus one, so plus one, because of cover, I'm okay. Barsia Skyrunner's doing the same thing, but he guarded himself, so he gets to reroll everything. And one of them hits, wounds on a five, and it's twin linked. And that does wound. And that is a save with cover. No, it isn't a save, one takes a wound. Now I'm in psychic range for Eldric Storm using a Strands of Fate dice. So there's five shots coming in here instead of rolling the d6. And freeze. Okay, guided. Reroll. Nice. Okay. Strength six. Strength six. Wounds on threes. And everything wounds. I need to make six up. Invulnerable saves. I make one of them. Is this two damage each? It's d3. It's d3 each. Four d3 damage. Yeah. It's definitely a dead mech gun, which stops me defending that stronghold as well. So where are we going next, Heath Edge? We'll do injured fire prism. Right. Uh, two super shots. You're firing Focus Murphy. I'm Murphy. spending that CP I got for dishing that order for Ard. as nails, because he is. He's minus one to wound. No. It lasts until the end of the face. Right, so hitting on fours. Right. Rerolling. The failed. Okay. Okay, so only one hit. Focused shot from the fire prism. So strength 18. Normally wounded on twos. But threes. Threes. But I can re-roll it. So it that goes through. So five plus invulnerable save is what you're saying. Yep. I failed the save. Six damage. Do you remember last time I rolled six damage and passed them all? Lightning can't strike twice, can it? No, it doesn't strike twice. Instead he takes two wounds. He's got five remaining. Second fire prism, firing at a tree somewhere nearby. And on threes. And misses the tree and hits Murphy straight in the face. Winning on threes because of Art of Nails. Both women. Nice, look at that, boxcars. Two, five plus invulnerable saves. I don't have any CP. And I failed both of those invulnerable saves. That is 12 damage. He's got five wounds remaining, four up, feel no pain. Don't worry, he'll be fine. He'll be absolutely fine. I don't think he's fine. After he gets scraped off the battlefield and someone reattaches <laughs> his head, he'll be fine. But that's assassinate and the end of Howling Man Murphy. And that is the end of Eldari, turn five. They've still got that wall walker left, a couple of fire prisms nipping around all over the place and some wraith guards rampaging through the orc settlement, killing everything in their way. In fact... The only thing I have left is one shock attack gun, well, one mech gun, and this unit of bikers over here who need to fight the Guardians. And at the end of the combat with the Guardians, they get wiped out. And at the end of Eldari turn five, they have 64 points to my 50. And I'm only going to pick up five points for this primary down here. 
making it 64 points to 55. Yes. It's so can I? Nice. It's nine points. Can I get nine points with just two units? Let's draw some cards and find out. Here's the thing. I still have Defend Stronghold in my hand because I'm still trying to defend my Stronghold. Though I can recycle that for a CP. So that's the CP I got this turn. Okay. And here's my first card. Capture Enemy Outpost. Here's my second card. Overwhelming Force. So in order to do this, this unit of bikers need to go down there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And capture your outpost. That will be eight points. And... If I kill an enemy unit that start the turn within range of an objective marker, I score an additional three. Right. So that's worth 11 and will be a win. So let's do that. Right. So I've moved, which means I'm not going to get five points for being on a set primary at the end of my turn. But if I get on your primary, it'd be worth five points for the primary, eight points to capture an enemy out. It's a 10 inch charge, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have any CP. I got this. That's a six inch charge. I don't got this and this is the way the world ends. <laughs> so if you go second, you score the primaries at the end of your turn, not at the beginning of your turn. So it's 50 points for the Orc, 64 points for the Eldari. It was a long shot to get onto this objective here, but it was the only long shot that we had. And uh, it was a brutal game. At the end of the game, I've got what, six models left? You're on the Instagram. I am on the Instagram. Heathage 40k? Heathage 40k, yes. Heathage 40k, check out Heathage 40k, it does some lovely paintings and things. Battle map from urbanmats.com. All the scenery here is from cromlec.eu. At the time of filming, there are still a couple of packs of dice. I over-ordered the dice, I think. These are a limited run. Once they're gone, they're gone. But if you want some, email me at winters40k at gmail.com and I'll let you know if I've got any left. They roll quite well. Um, they roll my Phil No Pains quite well. Anyway, we do hope you enjoyed that battle report. Happy Wargaming.